You know, the thing I love most about gardening is the optimism. Once you've got rid of all of the old rubbish and prepared the soil, you'll be able to plant all those wonderful flavours of autumn and winter. It sort of slow down the plant's ability to take up nutrients and really have a healthy plant. It's not a big attack. If it was really bad, I'd have to treat the soil maybe with some neem oil. But because it's only a minor attack, I'm just going to rotate the crops. Another good reason to rotate around the beds. <laughs> These will go in the bin, not the compost. It's worth testing your soil for pH. That's the acidity or alkalinity of your soil. Add your indicator liquid, then just put on the sulfate powder. That'll straight away give you a color, and then you compare it to the chart. Now this is very yellow, which is around about four or five, which is quite acid. At the other end, it'll be alkaline. So being acid, I can add some lime, that'll sweeten it up. Now, after the liming, you'll find those, and a lot of veggies are quite draining on the soil. So add some organic nutrients, cow manure is the best. A lot of people plant their veggies from seedlings, but you can save a lot of money. And of course, some veggies prefer to be grown from seed like peas. Green peas are a great variety, heavy producing, and you just space them out. The main thing with peas is don't plant them into wet soil or if there's rain imminent because they'll rot really quickly. Beetroot is another good crop sown from seed, but this year I'm actually going to plant my beetroot out from seed tape. The seeds are already spaced out on the tape, you just run it out cover it over with a bit of soil and they'll germinate in the right spacing. You don't have to do any thinning out. Normally I'd pull out the basil, but it's still looking pretty good and the weather's warm, so I'll leave it in for another month or two. For seedlings, I'm planting all the regulars, but a couple of different varieties. Of course, cauliflower, cabbages, and you can't miss kale. Now with broccoli, remember, it's going to get up to around about waist high and it's going to last at least six, maybe seven months. It's a really good cropper. So plant it just a little bit deeper because it will develop an additional root system at the base of the stem. Cabbages and collies are notoriously a slow crop. Cabbage is a little bit quicker, but collies are very, very slow. You just need patience. Kale, of course, has been around for thousands of years. A great crop. Half a pear, half an apple, two or three leaves in a blender. Green smoothie, every morning you can't beat it. Okay, pak choy across this little corner here because it doesn't mind just a little bit of shade. Uh, English spinach along the side of the bed there where the basil is in between it because the basil will eventually come out. Leeks I'll plant in this entire corner here because they just love the sunshine and the sorrel on the end of the bed just there. Now you need to protect your seedlings from slugs and snails. Then how about some sawdust? The snails don't like crawling over it, it's too crunchy and dry. Of course, you could use old pots, cut the bottom off them and just slide them over the top of your seedlings. It's a temporary measure, but it does last till the seedlings are up and growing. Yes, it doesn't like those sharp edges. And when it comes to controlling the cabbage white butterfly moth, I'll try anything, even a solar power butterfly. The kids will love it. So why let your garden go dormant in winter when this could be your reward? 